seconds. Time is now 6 p.m. It's time to get our meeting underway. Before we get started here this evening, we'd just like to make you aware that if you would like to address the board during the comments and concerns section of the meeting, please fill out a comments card and get that to myself or to Mr. Harris or any commissioner up here, and they'll see that I get to it during, and I can go over it for that point, point in time during the meeting. I'd like to ask that you put your uh, cell phones on silence. Board members, turn your vibration off as well due to the microphones. Before we get started again, we'd like to turn our attention to County Administrator Mr. Randy Harris. He's going to lead us in the invocation of the pledge. Please rise. Tell your heads, please. Father, we praise you and we thank you for your love and your mercy, your grace, your kindness. We thank you that you bless us so mightily and abundantly. We thank you for the opportunity to come together this evening and deal with issues that affect our community. We ask you to give us all wisdom and guidance and counsel from above. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Harris, for leading us this evening. For the record, today is August 2nd, 2016, and this is the regularly scheduled meeting for the Board of County Commissioners in Suwannee County. Item number one on our agenda this evening is the approval of the meeting minutes for the July 19th regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, board members, are there any changes or corrections that you'd like to see to these minutes? I don't have any, Mr. Chairman, or I'll issue a motion to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Gamble, seconded by Commissioner Wainwright. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Moving on to the consent uh, part of our agenda this evening. It's been requested that items number three and nine be pulled. Number three be pulled to be considered at another meeting. Number nine to be pulled for individual consideration this evening. Are there any other items that any bo board member uh, would like to pull? I have one question about number seven. Okay, number seven will be pulled for individual consideration. Are there any others? Hearing none, I need a motion for, of approval for items two, four through six, eight, and ten. So motion moved. approved. Motion right. made by Commissioner Wainwright, seconded by Commissioner Fleming. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, as noted previously, noted item number three, we considered it another meeting. Item number seven was requested to be pulled by Commissioner Sessions, and I'll read it into the record. Authors authorization to purchase new truck from Allen J. Chevrolet from Florida Sheriff's contract in the amount of $32,632.25 for fire rescue to be funded from fire contingency. Uh, Ms. Commissioner Sessions, you have our attention. You have a question. My only question um, is, is this something we just missed on the budget or just something just the missed? current vehicle that we're the current vehicle that we're using uh, is a 5500 Ford. We're constantly repairing it. We spoke to our maintenance shop and uh, trying to go to the best direction to kind of save money ahead of time because the vehicle we're using is about one hundred ten thousand dollars new. We're constantly putting tires, suspension parts because of the wear on the vehicle. So we're trying to extend the life of it. Um, this would be a replacement vehicle, as requested by the um, discussions with the maintenance department. So it would come out of fire contingency, which has the funds. Okay. So I need to know. Any further questions of Chief Summers regarding this issue? Hearing none, what are the wishes of the board? Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Commissioner Wainwright. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Sessions. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Moving on to item number nine, authorization to assist City of Live Oak with road maintenance on a section of Horn Avenue. Requested that uh, Mr. Harris give us uh, some further feedback on this issue. Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners, I pulled that to discuss it um, so that I could discuss actually a couple of other roads that we're performing some assistance or maintenance on within the city. Uh, we have a single agreement with the City of Live Oak for 
ongoing maintenance of a road, and that's Hitch Tuckney Road. So when we set that agreement up, we are providing that service, uh, and the city, in turn, uh, takes our leachate from the landfill. We do an even swap on that. Both parties benefit. Since we entered into that agreement, we entered into, actually we didn't enter into another agreement, but the board took action to allow the county road department to go out and provide some assistance on two roads on the east side of town, Anna and Eva. The plan was by the city at the time that it was presented to us was that they were planning to put millings from Walker when they reconstructed that. They needed assistance spreading the millings on those roads. That hasn't occurred. Uh, in preparation for that, though, we went ahead and put lime rock on the roads, graded them, got them shaped in preparation for the millings. We've communicated to the city that that is not a long-term solution by any stretch, that they're going to need to top that or do something. We've been back a few times since then uh, just to grade those roads. My hope is that they are going to be making a decision sometime soon on what to do as a permanent solution or something more permanent than what they have today. But uh, recently uh, I received a request to go to Horn Avenue over here on the west side of town, small stretch not far from the new Dollar General. Uh, next little housing project there. It's an unpaved road. Probably needs something similar to what we did on Anna and Eva. Um, I want you to be aware of where we are with all of the roads and uh, in my opinion this would be a one-time approach uh, to try to assist them with that road. It needs some lime rock and it needs to be graded. We could go in there and do that, shape it up, and then they would need to go ahead and figure out what their permanent solution is. But that's where we are with the assistance we've been providing in the last few years on roads in the city of Live Oak. I have a question. Commissioner Rainwright. Did, uh, did the city recently receive funding that they're going to pave Itchitutney, the balance of that road? And so that would, we would come out of the maintenance of that particular road? My understanding was that they had a DOT agreement, um, not much different than our agreements, go ahead and pave that. But I don't have any idea where they are, what the status of that is. Uh, I, I'm just thinking as, as, as if that does occur and, and to continue with the leachate agreement, I would think that we would need to, they would want us to pick up something else in, in exchange is all I'm thinking about. I don't know where they are on that road, but I have seen a lot of construction work going on uh, on the section between Itch Tutney and what essentially wasn't a road in the past, and it's becoming a road. That's How long is Horn Avenue? It's very short. It's just about hundred yards. About about one block. I'm all right with a one-time fix. Okay, is that a motion, Commissioner? I'll make that motion, yes, sir. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Wainwright, seconded by Commissioner Fleming. Is there any further discussion on this issue? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you, gentlemen. Moving on to proclamations and presentations. Uh, we'll now here, a, pre a presentation of a check in the amount of $50,000 from Florida Recreation Development Assistant Program, also known as FERDAP, for renovations at Douglas Park. Uh, we have a representative from the, uh, the Parks and Recreation Department, Florida Recreation Development Department, and that would be Craig Linney. I hope I said that correct. Liney. And he is the park manager for the Suwannee River State Park, and we'll turn our attention over to him and his partner. Hey, Welcome. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Craig Liney. I am the park manager at Suwannee River State Park. And uh, this is my assistant, Rihanna Elliott. Um, and we uh, are proud to be here tonight to present this important grant to you. Craig said, my name is Rihanna Elliott. I'm the park naturalist at Swanee River State Park. 
And the Department of Environmental Protection is proud to administer this program called the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program. This program is a competitive grant program that funds the acquisitions or the development of lands for public outdoor recreational use. This year, we are very proud that we are able to invest more than $7 million in 137 different recreational projects throughout Florida. Today, we have the honor of presenting to you and to our community a Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program grant check for $50,000 to be used at Douglas Park. These funds will pay for the development of playgrounds, soccer fields, football fields, softball fields, picnicking, and landscaping throughout the park. We want to congratulate the community on this grant award, and we look forward to joining you again as we celebrate the progress on this project. Thank you very much. Since you went to all the effort to make the big check, maybe we could take a little bit of, of a break here and we'll take a picture with the board in front of the podium, or the, the dais up here, if that's okay with you yep, guys, sure. okay? All right, everybody, let's do this. We're going to take a break for about two minutes. You play right guard and I play right tackle with us. <laughs> we'll, keep it, we'll let Jimmy run the ball. <laughs> I tell you what. Not after 60 oh. operations, you don't run the ball. <laughs> I tell you. Ball. Football is in the air. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. Okay, I folks, let's settle back in here. Moving on to item number 12, presentation of an econ economic impact analysis of Klausner Lumber One LLC. And we have the honor of listening to Dr. Alvin Jackson, our economic development director. And tonight he has uh, some visual aids as well to kind of help us guide us through this whole explanation. Once we get set up here, we'll turn our attention now to Dr. Jackson. You have to do all your own stuff here, Dr. Jackson. Once again, great afternoon, uh, Chairman and Swanee County Board of County Commissioners. Uh, this evening, what we want to uh, bring before you is just an economic uh, impact update on the Klausner Lumber Number no. One. Uh, they've been in existence. Uh, they started operations in January of 2015, and uh, we feel it's at this point we we actually have track record and some numbers uh, uh, that we would like to share with you and really show you in the community how this project is, has been and will continue to be a major economic impact here in Swanee County. This report actually will spread out uh, that economic impact over 10 years. So let's talk about performance to date. And there are uh, some extra full reports out on the counter and the PowerPoint. And if you don't want it in hard copy, please feel free to give me a call and we can send it to you digitally. The performance to date. Uh, the capital investment is, has been $112.3 million. Total employment, $3.2 uh, three, uh, 323 new jobs, the average wage, 32600 The total payroll is $2.2 million. 
Uh, just some uh, facts. Uh, the sawmill, the square footage is 213,120 square feet. The log yard building is about 29,000 square feet. The paved area is 961,510 square feet. The total taxes paid, paid uh, to date is 9, $900,336. So those are the taxes that have been paid to date. Now when we talk about Klausner Lumber One, you know, there has been investments in, into that site. And it's really the, it's the catalyst site. And so today, uh, we have made those investments. It's not limited to Klausner. I, and I just really want the commissioners and the, the uh, public to understand is that that site is larger than just Klausner. And so there will be additional benefits uh, to the catalyst site as new companies uh, come into the site. But just looking at the numbers, the county has invested $6.9 million in in dollars for infrastructure, site development, et cetera. Now, um, we want to make a correction here. Uh, the, the grant dollars were about, uh, about 12 million versus 8.4 million. So the total investment between the county and the state is $19.9 million. Also, if you remember last year, we gave them a performance-based uh, grant um, for performing. And at this time of the year, they submitted their report. And once again, they've invested $112.3 million. The project is, is expected to be about a $128 million project. They've hired the 323. Uh, the grant is $3.9 million. And it's going to be spread over seven years um, uh, and paid in those increments of $563,142 annually. This year's payout will be $489,934, which is 87% of the performance for this year. And so that's how the performance grant works. So every year they have to send us you know, a report. And basically, we will evaluate that report and uh, see if they they are actually meeting uh, the, the the goals and the requirements. So just let's uh, take a quick look. Uh, total incentives three point nine. Uh, that's about eleven thousand uh, dollars, two hundred sixty three dollars per employee that we per job that we're investing. The rate of return will be about 21.7%. Uh, it will take them about 4.4 years to actually, for the county to recoup those uh, incentive dollars. <clears throat> and I don't have a pointer, but uh, on this uh, slide you will see that the straight line uh, is the 3.9 million. Uh, the So over the next 10 years, they have created 350 jobs, and it could be more. The indirect induced jobs that will be created is about 207 <coughs> jobs. Now, direct, indirect jobs are those jobs where they directly provide services, goods to the company. And companies would have to hire individuals, persons to uh, actually do that. And induced jobs are those jobs that are created, uh, like in restaurants, uh, medical center, etc. But those 350 jobs will actually create a total of 557 jobs. Now, this piece is, is really important. You know, many times we say, how many jobs have they created? Well, you know, the numbers, you can have 350 jobs and folks are making $10 an hour. You can have 350 jobs 
and basically you get $124 million in payroll, uh, indirect induced $69 million, and over 10 years the total payroll will be $193 million in payroll. Uh, the taxable service sales and purchases, direct $77 million, indirect induced $10 million, a total $88 million. One. And so what we're looking at is these dollars are actually impacting Suwannee County. And once again, um, you can see So this, this project touches many areas, and for those that, that uh, get a copy of the plan on the back of it, these are all the companies that benefit from, from uh, I didn't know how to put this on the So we're talking about general medical, limited services restaurants, corporate subsidiaries, offices, full service restaurants, uh, nursing care facilities, janitor services, wood preservation. These are all the indirect and induced industries that benefit from a thousand being here in Suwannee County. So the doing construction, basically, when we talk about economic development, we want to talk about the temporary jobs and the dollars that are being spent doing construction. That that impacts this one county also at a tune of about thirty six million. And basically, what we do is is kind of fifty fifty material and uh, labor. Uh, during construction period. So the fiscal impact overview. Uh, the, it will generate additional benefits and costs to the local taxing districts. Uh, the source of overall the county will receive approximately about $8.5 million over 10 years. Uh, Swanee, uh, the Swanee County Public Schools will receive about $5.2 million, and special districts about $240,000. And that just gives you a chart of how uh, that spreads in each taxing district. So, in summary, the project operation will support employment. It has uh, supported employment and other economic impacts uh, in this community. Once again, I want to reiterate, uh, the 350 workers directly employed by the project will earn approximately $36,000, and that's what benefits. The direct activity will support an additional 207 jobs, indirect and induced. Uh, in the community, earning $31,000 annually. The total additional payroll workers' earnings associated with the project is estimated to be about $193.5 million. And the taxable sales and purchases uh, uh, is projected to be at about $88.2 million. And so when we're talking about economic development and we see that the county and the state, uh, at the end of the day, would have invested about $20 million, uh, but the return is 350 plus 207 jobs, $193.5 million in payroll, and 88.2 in taxable sales and purchases. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Go ahead. How much of that is going to the school board? 
You mean the taxes? Taxes. This year, $410,000. And each year that will um, increase as the, as the value of the, of the site increases. No. Question? Yes. Uh, on page three, uh, 2015 total taxes paid. Uh, I know that there was still some construction going on, and so I don't know where the property appraiser's valuation lies in that total capital investment. Is that 936000 Does that include what was paid to the school and water management as well? Correct. Okay. Yes. 410000 of, of that was school, and then the remainder went to the spe okay. special districts. All right. Any further questions for Dr. Jack? I got, I got one question. Commissioner Gamble. There's been a little bit of controversy over the job numbers. Can you give us an explanation on, on how you went about verifying them? Yeah, 941. Uh, basically, the, uh, each company has to file a 941 with the federal government, and one of their requir uh, reporting requirements is that they have to provide me a 941 that they submitted to the federal government. So basically, the numbers, 323 is real, and the payroll is real. Really? That's all I had. I so just have a if, comment. Go ahead. So, Go so ahead. if that, uh, that 941 give you, is, is a confirmation of, of, of total employment, how much is paid out, and all that stuff? Correct. Is that by data or? No, that's the report that they have to submit to the federal government on a quarterly basis. Commissioner Sessions. I just want to comment that it um, looks like with what we've got in it, with grants and everything else, it's about $20 million and it's going to be about a $281 million return. That, you know, when we had a little bit of rough times, but that's still a pretty good return for $20 million. I agree. Over 10 years. Anything else by the board? Thank you, Dr. Jackson, Thank very you. much for that Thank wonderful you. professional presentation. All right. Moving right along this evening to commissioner items. Are there any, is there any commissioner that would like to add something to the agenda this evening or open up something for discussion at this time? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if uh, you don't mind, I'd like to open something up for just discussion or maybe clarification. Understood. Go ahead, Commissioner Gamble. Uh, back some time back, we um, changed the policy on sick leave, and either I misunderstood the policy or it's been interpreted wrong, and I just want to get some clarification on the board, from the board as far as uh, when we have employees go out on work and scomp. Understood. Um, I'm sure most of y'all by now are aware that we have an employee out on workman's comp that has run out of sick leave because when they were hurt on the job, they haven't been building it um, while out on workman's comp. Uh, maybe from lack of going through it when we passed it, which if it is, and I'm at fault for that, I didn't realize that at the time that it would apply to workman's comp. I thought it was strictly going to be uh, unscheduled sick leave. Understood. So I don't know if... You, Anybody else has any comments on it or can straighten me out on it if you don't mind? Well, I'll, I'll take a stab, at it, a stab at it. I think that during, during the course of the adoption of that policy, it was meant to uh, affect, I think, vacation and sick leave, but in an, in, in an effort to fix another problem, it created another problem with workman's comp. So I think it just it just affected that the, so I believe that's what occurred at that point in time um, sometimes these discussions come up and we find things out after the fact but you know with regard to uh, my comments on it I'll try to give some some of my research that I've done on the situation after I was made aware of it um, you know we, we have we have to decide what we want to do, what the policies are uh, in any situation, whether it be workman's comp or annual leave or sick leave. Um, you know, in, in those, co that conversation is called benefits. Uh, so we, as a commission, offer a very competitive benefits package uh, to our employees. 
And so when we, when we look at how we institute those policies, uh, we have to say to ourselves, are we doing what's in the best interest of the taxpayer? And are we co taking into account uh, the employee's needs and their personal responsibility in regards to accrual of sick, of sick leave? And so we can do uh, several things here this evening uh, in regards to that, or we could put it on the agenda for the next meeting, give the other, other commissioners an opportunity to do any research on it if they're not aware of any workman's comp situation. So um, if anybody is prepared to talk, to it, to talk about it tonight, we can, or we can bring it back on the agenda the next meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'm not, Fleming. I'm not a parent, prepared to talk on this subject tonight. Uh, what I would do, I would like to to do further study on it, and and you know, like get legal opinion. I don't desire to make a hasty decision at this time. Understood. Anybody else, Commissioner? Well, I'd like to spend some time, not just making a decision up here, but uh, maybe have a have a workshop on it. To really get into the details of it, to really discuss it among us, okay, among the board. Understood. Anybody else have a problem with that? Well, I don't have a problem with it. I just want the board to really take a look at it. I feel like we, well, what we did was a policy to stop abuse of sick leave, but I don't believe an individual that gets hurt working for us is qualifying as an abuse of sick leave. And I don't think at the point where they going out on leave, especially when they're going to doctor's appointments to our workman's comp doctors, um, that they're not being compensated for it. Okay. So I would, I, if a workshop's what the board wishes or further discussion, I definitely would be interested in it. Okay. All right. Sounds like the general consensus is we can discuss this at a, at a future date, either a future meeting or a future workshop. You okay with that, Commissioner? Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd like it on the next meeting if we can. All right, next meeting agenda. All right, moving back to Commissioner Eisen. Is there anything anybody else would like to add? I just have one thing. Um, in light of the fact, I don't know if, if you guys got your budget books in a timely manner uh, this time around, but I had planned on spending some time this weekend going over my budget book to be prepared for the budget workshops, which are Wednesday and Thursday. And I dropped it off on Friday, and there was extensive remodel of the book. Uh, I waited around for a considerable amount of time, and I was made aware that it would be, where it would be ready on Monday. So I, Monday I worked, Tuesday I spent time preparing for this meeting, and now we're going into budget workshops with a considerable amount of change into those budget books. And so I'm saying to the board that I feel like uh, we need to reschedule those workshops to not a distant date, but a different time so that we can all have maybe a weekend to go to sit down and go over the other things because you guys all got other things going on just like I do. Uh, and uh, th those proposed dates that I would suggest would be meeting before the next meeting in the morning, proceeding until, say, 4 o'clock, if it takes that long, take a break, then come back into our regular meeting that evening, and then reconvene for the balance of the workshop on Wednesday morning uh, and going through there, if that's okay with everybody. That would be the next meeting, the, next re the date of the next regularly scheduled board meeting, meeting that morning and then all the next day. Anybody have a problem with that? I don't. No. Commissioner Wainwright? The 16th and the 17th, then. Right. I'm, I'm fine with that, Mr. Chairman. I'm Likewise, I'm, if, if we go through with it over the next two days, I think we better be prepared to have uh, an extensive tentative budget hearing uh, in September because I don't, chances are, it, I'm just not prepared right. for, for tomorrow or or the next day, uh, but if we want to, if we need to go in and have it in the next two days, we can go through it and then just 
like I say, potentially be prepared at the first tentative budget <coughs> hearing to have an extensive discussion then, but I, well, honestly, I'd rather move it to the 16th and 17th. I can I can excuse myself for that a little bit. That's that's an organizational meeting, is it not? Yeah. yeah. Well, to, um, tomorrow's primary the constitution officer and department head presenting their budgets to the board. Um, I wouldn't have a problem sitting through tomorrow and and then maybe adding an additional day to our budget workshop on the sixteenth. I, I would just rather just reschedule it and do it all. It's fresh in your mind. You can go through. You can make telephone calls, Commissioner, to those to those outside agencies and things if you have questions. It just makes better sense to reschedule, I think, in my mind. I'm fine with that. All right. So the, the, the budget workshops for tomorrow and Thursday are hereby canceled. Okay. Ms. Mr. Chairman. Yes. If I could. We've already checked on the the use of this building. I understand there may be some logistics. We, we would need to go to the city hall for the workshops. Understood. Um, because the 17th uh, supervisor elections be set up into. Understood. Okay. So it's not a problem. We can we get time to re-advertise. All right. So the venue has changed to the city of Live Oaks uh, main building there on U.S. Highway 90. Okay. Same times. Same times, 9 a.m. both days. All right, moving right along to staff report or county attorney items. Uh, Mr. Bavat, do you have anything for us? Yes, sir, not this evening. Okay. Moving on to staff reports, item number 13, and we're going to uh, listen to Catherine Allen, Betty Lawrence, Greg Scott, and James Summers. First up is Catherine Allen, Extension Office Director. You have our attention, Ms. Allen. Thank you. Um, just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, we've had some very exciting news. Um, our 4-H competition that we had at the university, we had a lot of uh, winners from Swanee County. And uh, actually, the speechwriter from UF for our um, uh, Vice President Payne actually looked at one of the success stories that we had with one of our youth last year and talked about how these experiences can really lead to amazing opportunities for the future. Um, one of the youth that we're talking about is going to an Ivy League um, university. And one of the things in all of her college applications talked about her experiences in 4-H. And she was having a hard time deciding between Harvard and Yale. So um, really good problem to have. But um, very exciting there. Also, our very own Christian Rodriguez is a state delegate. He is the the new treasurer for the state 4-H um, council. So again, this is um, where they get a lot more experience. He'll be traveling to other counties throughout Florida and um, helping to uh, run that, that office. Uh, this Friday, August 5th, is the annual 4-H banquet. This is where the award presentations are given. Um, I believe all of you have had a, an invitation, and we encourage you to come and share in the good news. There's a lot of good things that are happening. These kids have worked hard. And um, it's exciting to see those things. It starts at 6 p.m. I'll be in the Coliseum. Um, I just got back from the bovine buzzer camp. Um, I know it sounds funny. But uh, this is a statewide camp that we put on here in Swanee County. So we had folks as far as coming from Okeechobee that came all the way this morning to attend this um, week. Well, it's about three days now. Um, you know, today's Tuesday, four-day camp. And um, just as an example, this year we're going through lactation. So it's in-depth to prepare the kids for uh, dairy quiz bowls where they can go on to, to national competitions. Um, in this case, uh, my, my uh, role was teaching about tasting. And believe it or not, milk tasting is a career that someone can, uh, can get into. And th there's a reason why milk tasting is very important, because um, milk can absorb flavor. It can, um, it can also absorb odors. And so with the um, people doing milk tasting, one of the things may be that a farmer may need to do better weed management in the pasture um, because of what it's eating. It may be that they need to change when they feed the cow because that can directly um, influence the flavor found in milk. 
Um, it could also be that there, it could be a detection for um, microbial growth. So it could be an, uh, um, an occurrence of mastitis where we want, don't want, we want to pull that cow out um, so that that milk doesn't get pooled um, with the other milk. Um, it could be ketosis. Um, it could be that somebody didn't um, manage the temperatures properly. And so here from a very simple talk uh, about tasting and how this sensory activity works, it leads into a much bigger discussion. So uh, just a, a quick note about that. Uh, we're starting our next class of Master Gardener Volunteers. Um, this is an extensive class. Orientation is tomorrow. Uh, and then the classes start August 10th, and they run until November 16th. So as you can tell, that is a, a very intensive class. They are required to pass a final exam. And then the first year, they're required to give 75 hours back to the community. So we have an awesome, awesome uh, cadre of volunteers. And, um, you really should be proud of the folks because they do a lot of things, including um, the start back up of the seed library at the, um, at the Live Oak Library. So that goes for one to three every Wednesday. And usually there's a gardening talk as well as that um, lending opportunity so that people can pick up seeds there. Uh, we're starting um, a free diabetes class uh, Thursday, October, uh, August 11th, and that's three consecutive Thursdays. We're working with the health department on that one from 5.30 to 7.30. So um, one of the things, this isn't as in-depth as some of our other diabetes classes, but it does not include the um, consultation with the registered dietitian, which, you know, um, is still a reduced cost, but um, sometimes that's uh, a challenge for folks. So this is a free class. And we're going to be doing a dining with diabetes class because we know that that has been a real issue for folks that have diabetes and there's not a lot of information out there. So how do they um, go out to eat and still be able to manage this, um, this disease? Um, we were able to get uh, some support from the Swanee River Economic Council for financial literacy classes that we're doing. So we're partnering with Columbia County Extension for Smart Money Moves, and they've provided, because of Swanee River Economic Council, they've been able to provide us with some really nice tools that people can use to start conversations with their families, to manage their money, budget, etc. Those are free classes. The one in uh, Suwannee County will be on August 15th at the Extension Office and in Columbia on November 9th. Um, both of those are three-hour classes and these are basic classes. Um, and these are for folks, you know, I was, um, my parents taught me a lot and I'm very thankful for that, but one of the things that they said is you don't talk about money. Well, if people don't have a safe place to talk about money, um, they can um, have financial problems in, in, the fu in their future. And so this is a really important safe place that they can get uh, research-based information. We're not selling anything. This is so that they can understand the basics. We'll be, because of the comments that we've gotten from the classes that we've done so far, we'll be doing some advanced how to invest kind of kinds of classes. And then we also have um, ship classes coming up. So um, the bovine camp is our last uh, summer day camp for kids. And because um, school starts up here shortly, so. <laughs> Thank you for that presentation. Is, uh, does anybody have any questions for Ms. Allen? All right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, now we'll welcome up our Director of Libraries, Ms. Betty Lawrence. Good evening, commissioners and community. Uh, we're just uh, ending our summer reading program. We have an annual summer reading program, so I'd like to just uh, give you a little bit of information on that. Um, and this, the uh, stats that I have are just for Swanee County this time. Um, we started our first uh, summer reading program for youth with about 243 children, but um, the last count I have is that we uh, had in attendance um, between the two branches, 6,135 uh, children. Um, and so I'm, I'm always um, impressed and glad about the kind of participation that we have from our youth uh, during the summer. Um, and I also want to give a, a shout out, if you will, or mention our teenagers, our youth that volunteer doing uh, the summer reading program. Um, we, so many times we talk about, you know, the problems that we have with youth, but 
I want to testify that we have a lot of youth in our communities that are very responsible. Um, they start and they, uh, most of them stay with us for the complete uh, six to eight weeks of the summer reading <coughs> program. And this year they logged in some 2,500 hours. And that was specifically to help uh, with our summer reading programs at Branford and at Live Oak this year. Um, we also um, had um, not as much participation as I'd like with the adult summer reading program, but it's mounting up. Uh, keep in mind that the number indicates the uh, adults that attended the programs, not necessarily everybody that was reading, because we have high numbers for that. But we did have 521 uh, adults that participated in our summer reading programs at Branford and Live Oak. So we just combined those numbers. Um, the last adult program that we had, I'd like to just um, express my appreciation to the Army and uh, the Friends of the Library. We had a 5K run uh, that was stationed at the library. And um, it, it worked really well. We had a, um, and this year the theme was around fitness. Um, and so we had a, um, um, what we call a healthy breakfast after the run, which went over very well. And it was healthy. <laughs> um, but got a lot of comments on that. And I had someone that signed up. Uh, I guess they were just maybe uh, vacationing, but South Dakota and Chicago. Um, um, Ohio, that kind of impressed me a little bit that they would even participate. Uh, but we had fun with that. I didn't run, but I did walk. <laughs> um, we also, um, with the children's uh, pro uh, programs, each of you have one of these, but there are some out front. For those of you who'd like to uh, pick up one, it gives you a sample of the kind of programs that the kids participated in. This summer, I got to see the miniature horses, and um, I held a snake, which is unusual Ooh. for me because I was always taught growing up in Swanee County, especially if you see a rattlesnake, you do what you could to get rid of it. <laughs> but this was a different experience for me, um, and the kids really loved it. Um, let's see. Also, there are some flyers out front that uh, give you an idea of what kind of programs we'll be uh, having during the month of August. Um, and one program I'd like to mention to you, there are not enough flyers for the number of people in the building, but let me uh, encourage you to share this information with anyone else that you'd like to. Um, if you remember, um, I guess maybe a couple of meetings or so ago, we had a representative from the um, chief financial office's um, um, office in Tallahassee, and he talked a little bit about uh, the treasure hunt. So I want to thank Commissioner Bashaw for um, helping to arrange to have a program at the library so that uh, people that are interested in uh, having help uh, doing this search, you can come out on August 15th at 430 uh, the gentleman will be there, and we will all be there with computers. We'll help you do the search there in the library online. Uh, you never know. So um, if you can, just come out and be with us. Um, also want to <clears throat> tell you that the Darden Park Library is coming along fine. <clears throat> you have the opportunity to, or um, maybe you already have, stop by and see it, and there are so many pictures online, Facebook and everything else, that you can probably get a good idea of what the, the, the update is uh, just by looking at some of those. Um, and tonight I'm prepared to do library cards. So if anybody is in here, you don't have a library card or you need to uh, update your library card, um, I have my iPhone and I have applications. We can do it during the break or after, um, after the meeting. Um, so, you have any questions for me? I don't have a question, but I was looking at these numbers. I know you gave out the numbers, but the children there, so I'm looking at this number. It's 5143 teens, 992, total 61, 6,135. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. And those are good numbers. 
as we count. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Lawrence. Thank are there, you. Are there any other questions of the board, Mrs. Lawrence? Thank you for your report. Very well done. All right, next we'll welcome up our Parks and Recreation Director, Mr. Greg Scott. Good evening, gentlemen and, and uh, community. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here as always. Um, just give an update on the uh, uh, airport first. Uh, we've got the uh, stormwater master plan done and it's out of the way. Um, we are uh, in the process of uh, getting together the, the information on the AWAS and the tug system for um, the grant we got for that. Uh, AWAS will be um, much excited for our tenants out there that's uh, been long needed. Um, the um, we got the bid opening for the, the maintenance building on August 9th and um, we had a little celebration for Dana Brindle. He was uh, retired and on his merry way he stopped by the office twice and wants to come back and volunteer. So uh, I'm not sure if his wife's working him too hard at home or what, but um, anyway, different story. Um, we um, also in the process of upgrading the security system, uh, the keypads both at uh, the main gate and also at fire rescue. Um, issuing new cards to the tenants, uh, one per hangar. Uh, some want one for each vehicle, but uh, it's one per hangar that we can track them now to know who's coming in when, and uh, that way when we have an issue, we can track it down to who is there. So uh, a lot better security than we've had in the past. Um, uh, on athletics, uh, we've wrapped up baseball and softball season at uh, 419 kids involved with uh, uh, baseball softball program for the year. Um, we also had uh, four different state tournaments that we uh, offered. Um, we had teams from the North Florida area here. Uh, economic impact was probably about two hundred. I'm sorry, about three hundred thousand dollars to the area for that. Uh, uh, Rusty and his group got to benefit a lot from the people who stayed in Lake City, but um, we don't mind sharing. Oh, Rusty's gone. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, that was real good for the community, and uh, just the economics alone helps put that money back into the to the kitties. Um, we um, also have got uh, football registration going on now. I've got the flyers out front, passed out to y'all also, so you've got the information for for football and cheerleading. Uh, we had uh, six, the first football uh, uh, league is wrapped up this wrapping up this week. So um, I mean, last year for football, we had 200, about 202 kids involved with that, so hopefully it will be a little bit more this year. There's a big correlation between the success and the excitement at the high school level and what our numbers are. So their numbers are getting to build at the high school level, so we hope that ours will do also. Um, on Park side and, and some other things, uh, the spring's been very busy this year. We got real good cooperation from the Sheriff's Office on patrols. Uh, helping to maintain activity uh, at those locations. Um, at the arena, at the rodeo arena, we've got uh, new speakers installed. Help Mark, guys helped us with that, or probably did, did most of that. Uh, but next, we'll have to work on the irrigation for that. So we've got some issues with that to we'll be working on next. Um, the uh, pool uh, had every, less, every swim lesson full for the whole season. Um, and the uh, day camp wrapped up, was wrapping up next week. I'm sorry, this week we'll wrap up day camp. I've been using Swanee Intermediate School for that program, real good par partnership with the, uh, the uh, school for the programs. And we averaged over three, 30 kids a, a day in that program. But uh, they, I keep getting parents stop me and thanking me for what we're doing. I can't take credits to the staff that does that. But um, a lot of trips and things, but the kids are really enjoying it, having a blast doing that. I always want to, with day camp, I want the kids to get excited when they, before they get there, get excited about going so mama don't have to get, worry about getting them up and force them to get dressed like they do their other part of the year. Um, and then get them there, have a blast all day long, go home exhausted, eat supper and crash. That way mama's real happy on both ends of the day and that's the important thing. Um, the... Um, that's... 
pretty well it. Uh, one thing I just want to mention, if you see our guys, or especially our park staff out and about, uh, even our guards and such, it's hot out there. I don't know if you all noticed this year, but uh, generally our guys don't have AC. Uh, they're in the elements and stuff, and every once in a while whenever I see um, our guys out there sweating and getting with it, um, uh, I really appreciate what they do, and if I pass a dump truck that's got his air on, I'm like, I'm jealous. But um, or if I'm sitting in the other truck, I'm, they're probably jealous too. But uh, it, it's um, you know, just remember those guys. You know, if you run into them sometime, they're they're getting with it, and I really appreciate what they do. Um, they make they make me look better than I can mm -hmm. by myself. So, uh, any questions you got for me? Any questions of Mr. Scott by the board? No, I just got a comment. Um, just a thank you. We had a boat ramp break in half out of Charles Springs uh, a couple weeks ago. Made a quick phone call to uh, Mr. Scott that afternoon. Met two of his guys down there with about 10 bags of cement, and we put a Band-Aid on it. And then we got uh, made a phone call to or Greg uh, worked it out with uh, Public Works to get us a load of rock down there within a couple more days. So. Two departments working good together, and they were real speedy with it. I just appreciate it. Appreciate that. I'd like to just add to I just got a notification. That we wrote three grants. Uh, Daryl may not even know this yet, but we wrote three grants for uh, boat ramp <coughs> improvements uh, with Boat Improvement Fund uh, from Game of Fish. Uh, we were successful with the uh, Peacock Lake boat ramp grant, uh, not uh, Charles, and we, I haven't heard, of, I'm sorry, not Peacock. Uh, but I haven't heard about Charles yet, so I'm hoping Charles will be on the list. Because that's Maybe easy. so that being the one that broke in half. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Anybody else? I got one thing. Mr. Scott, I just want to, and this, this happens with all the department heads, is the coordination of efforts between the other bodies of government to make things like this happen. And, and I'll talk to, speak to the effect that we get reports of the people that you hire for these day camps and or concessions and things like that that are usually, I guess, would be high school students or right. maybe just recent graduates who are spending their summer uh, contributing to their community, although they are getting uh, some pay for it, but it's still kind of a labor of love. But um, the school board letting us use uh, that facility is good. We have, a, we have a school board member here this evening that needs to be recognized, Mrs. Julie Ulmer with District 3, and so we just like to ask that you Send our warm love and greetings and thanks back to the Swanee County School Board this evening by the Board of County Commissioners, if you do that for us. Thank you. Uh, on the same note, we do, for the tournaments, we use the Swanee Middle School field and also the Swanee High School field for those tournaments. And, you know, our guys just went and helped, you know, got the fields ready and stuff and worked them during the tournament. But um, they're more than eager to have us there. And it's, it's a, I hear the, the heartaches throughout the state from my counterparts and we don't have that here. Everybody pitches in. It's nice to be able to call school, public works, county maintenance, anybody. That, and uh, we, you know, we're in this thing together. So yeah. appreciate that. The other, the other point I wanted to make is along those same lines is, um, and I hate to put you on the spot, but I know you can do it, is can you explain to us how you arrive at the numbers with the ripple effect with the tournaments in relation to uh, the amount of economic impact to the community from those tournaments, maybe speak to the volume of people that are coming in. I like that. And then um, <clears throat> also uh, speak to, the, to what these folks are saying when they come into our community, which reflects good on, on the school board as the maintenance of their fields, but also your fields. Certainly. In the, in the four tournaments we have, we had about 27 teams involved with those tournaments. Some were very small tournaments, but, but still that was important to them. Um, if you calculate about 15 members per team, and somebody brings one and a half, two people with them, so you add those numbers, and they if they spend $50 a day, which they usually spend more than that if you ever travel, um, you spend more than that generally, um, and then number of days that they're here, then calculate it times 1.9 is percent rollover, which is a very conservative number. That's how we come up with those those numbers. Um, it you know it, it it really you know the thing that I keep hearing from people when they when I walk through the tournaments wow you know when I we saw on the map where live it was we didn't know it was going to get here and, and it'd be like it is and y'all feel so much better so much better than ours had uh, Columbia County left yet okay 
we had one of the guys stop and talk to me about uh, how much our fields are different than a neighboring county, um, that they may have more, but ours are better. Uh, and when you put the quality, when we started building the complex years ago, we went to Savannah and looked at their facility and used their model as our model. You know, we looked at Tallahassee and some other places, but Savannah was, was the premier place at the time. The thing that Mr. Pearson taught us there was the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And the thing that our guys put a lot of effort into it and the resources we get from the city and the county helps us do that. But because of that, we get, you know, 400 games a year on those fields. We get, if you don't invest in them with fertilization and irrigation and such, you're going to get them beat to death and, and not be able to use them. Um, you know, sometimes the high school football field gets beat on some, but their field doesn't hold up as well as ours field, our field does. So, um, but it's labor love for the guys, but it's really the investment that the community makes to get the, community, the investment back uh, by doing the tournaments also. So how many games are you hosting a year there uh, that would create this economic impact? Oh, off the top of my head, I'm guessing I'd have to run some numbers on those tournaments. You do double header, I mean, you do right. uh, you know, double elimination and such. And but even our even our local leagues, we get teams from Jasper coming down to play. We get Brantford coming up and play. We get some other t teams coming in also. So it's hard to calculate. You know, wh you know all the residual money we're getting without even in addition to the tournaments. Okay. Well, um, maybe you could have that information at budget workshops. There. But yeah, so you would say you're at capacity then? Oh yeah. yeah. We, our, our, there's some dead time, you know, when it gets to be you know, maybe July and August, but you don't have as many tournaments then uh, after they get past the, 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 um, the traditional Babe Ruth and Little Leagues and that kind of thing, the playoff format. Uh, tournament ball is big. And there's a lot of revenue to be generated there. And you know, in the budget workshops, I'll be asking to put a, some money away in a fund. So when we get some grants flowing again, we can start writing a, you know, we add some of the local money to that, uh, not necessarily for matches, but funding things we can't afford to fund through the grant, uh, lights and bathrooms and that kind of thing. So. Understood. All right. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll now welcome up our public safety director, uh, Chief James Summers. Commissioners, Chairman, um, like uh, Greg was saying, I hope everybody that has to work outside is hydrated. That's something we, we try to preach with our staff, being our conditions and what we have to do. And we've kind of suspended our training during these hot months and, and try to enforce that they, they hydrate. So try to encourage using the restroom every 15 minutes to be properly hydrated. So um, as far as fire rescue, 618 calls on average per month. Um, we're continuing with our CPR classes. And a uh, little funny story, uh, we were going through Santa Fe Community College. We've put their CPR program out of business uh, doing CPR classes within Swanee County. They were trying to figure out what we were doing up here uh, with our uh, our awareness program and our CPR program with the citizens. So we've had to change venues and are now with UF Health out of uh, Gainesville, and um, they're ecstatic to have us, you know, try to try to expand their role up in North Central Florida. Um, two thirds of our employees in the month of August will be participating with a, an advanced airway course through uh, UF Health out of Jacksonville. They will be meeting with um, top physicians in pre and post care related to EMS. So we're, we're excited about that to try to get that services over here to make sure that we're providing the best care to our citizens. Um, another thing we're proud of is our door to balloon time. So that's for cardiac and uh, stroke are at 17 minutes on average. And that's something to be proud of. Average counties around us are about 45 minutes door to balloon time. So we, we take pride in that 17 minutes. Um, that means as soon as you hit the doors, that's to when door to balloon, you hit the front door of the hospital, you're on the table having that surgery performed on you. So our, our guys are recognizing these symptoms, 98% uh, accuracy. They're bypassing the ER. They go straight to the physician's table. The, the team's sitting there waiting on them, and they perform the procedures. So 
So that's something I'm proud of, to have that service here with the type of service we have uh, that we can bring back to our community. Um, also, the other day we were able to train with Klausner. They had their downtime on one of their days. That's something we've been kind, of, kind of waiting for to uh, work with the water system out at Klausner and all the machinery and, and uh, trying to get familiar with that site. We've done major, uh, multiple walkthroughs, but as far as our staff, as far as the response for response times, actually flowing water within the facility, um, shutting down all their equipment, making sure all their safety procedures work fun you know, function properly. So uh, that was a great hit. We learned a lot from them. They learned a lot from us as far as what's expected. So um, we're proud to have them here and work with them, and we have a good working relationship with, with Klausner out there. So does the commission have any questions or comments? Any questions of Chief Summers by the board? Nope. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I called for questions. I, know, can I clear already? something up real, while Jamie's still up yeah, here. Um, Commissioner Sessions had asked about the truck a moment ago. We talked about the brush truck, the 550 that these men are running around, this expensive truck and wearing it out. Uh, the word that was used was a replacement for that. That truck isn't really being replaced by the new one. We're keeping no. We're keeping right, the you're trying to keep truck. the miles off of it. I yeah, that's once right. You, once you explain that yes, like that, I under, okay. understood that I side of it. Because he said replacement truck, we're actually it just costs a lot to run a 5500 yeah. around versus yeah, we're gonna 2500. The, the old one and have yes, the one as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. While you're up, do you have uh, moving on to item number 14? Do you have anything to tell us regarding the state's attorney's office? I was going to give you a staff report. Oh, okay, Mr. Chairman. Well, it wasn't on. No, 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 no. It's um, not on the agenda. We can't do okay. it. But that's okay. I'll have another opportunity. Go ahead. In a minute. Let me staff yeah, I do, report. I do have. From I do have some items, Mr. Randy Harris, for the state attorney's office. Go ahead on. Um, several. Um, I spoke to the board. I don't know several months ago, and got authorization to bid a number of things that we might have to bid related to the site and different things. I have a more specific and narrowly tailored list tonight. Um, it's in your agenda packet that I wanted to get board authorization on because there are a number of site issues and Mizell building issues that I want to bid uh, and I wanted the board to know about it. So they're on your list tonight. I'll run through them real quick. Seven items here. Uh, one of these is going to be a sole source because it's a power company. That's uh, We need a self-supporting concrete pole on the northeast corner of that building. Uh, because we have to take the guy wires out that are holding that old pole down in order to run a stormwater drain right through that specific location. Uh, could, we need to... Could, could you share the value of that particular project? Is it, the, is it changed from what you told me? The, the estimate, if we had time, I'd ask you to speculate on what that price might be, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and share the news with you. Uh, the estimate on that is going to be in the neighborhood of $30,000 to change that pole a pole. Move the a, pole. A, a one pole. A concrete pull pole. Pull a pole out, a wooden pole, and replace it with a concrete pole. Very expensive. In Gift any event, uh, they did. does that help you? <laughs> SMH. Um, SMH. It helps us to know that we can bid the rest of these items. Um, we're going to need to bid out a uh, new sewer main uh, and a manhole installation. We need to remove some things that we need to do at the Mizell property. We need to remove the old scales and then that piece of the building that's protruding out on the south side of the building will have to be cut back to accommodate the, uh, part of the new parking lot. Uh, that'll need to be bid. The west side of that building, uh, that wall needs to be plumbed and some new siding put on it uh, just to clean it up. And on that side of the building is where we will also have these uh, stormwater retention pond. We'll need to bid that out as well, uh, along with the stormwater collection system, the inlets and pipe system. That'll take care of some other water issues around this property. Uh, new gutters for the Mizell building, and then we'll need to bid underground power uh, electric from that new pole over to the new state attorney's office. And I'd like to go ahead and bid the same for this building so that we can get rid of these old poles that are out here that'll be between the new parking lot and this one. Um, and we do have a plan in those designs to connect the two parking lots with a sidewalk for overflow parking for 
this facility when we have larger crowds. So those are the items that I'd like to get authorization to go ahead and bid. Uh, with the exception of that poll, we're just going to have to pay them to replace Florida Power to replace that poll. Mm. And kind of a sole source. Mm -hmm. you can get it. it is a sole source. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions re regarding items one through seven here? I admit, Mr. Chairman, go if ahead. we could, when we go to address the issues, can we pull six separately so that it will be a separate item because it is a sole source item? Okay. So uh, we can make a, a motion for items one through five and seven all in once, or we can discuss it some more, whatever you guys want to do. And then we'll consider item number six individually. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kabat. I'll offer a motion one through five and seven to approve them. Go out of bid. Motion made by Commissioner Gamble. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Wainwright. And just for clarification, uh, in the backup, I'll read these out so that people can understand what we're saying. Number one, installation of new sewer main and manhole authorization to bid. Removal of scales and portion of roof and south wall of Mizell building authorization to bid. Plum West rear wall of Mizell building install new siding authorization to bid. Stormwater collection system, inlets, and pipe system, authorization to bid. New gutters, Mizell Building, authorization to bid. And number seven, underground electric service, the state's attorney's office, and the judicial annex, authorization to bid. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Item number six, installation of new self-supporting concrete pole at northeast corner of state attorney building. Florida Power sole source authorization to execute contract. What is the wishes of the board? Motion to approve. Motion Second. to approve, made by Commissioner Wainwright, seconded by Commissioner Flint, uh, Commissioner Sessions. All in favor, uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, thanks, gentlemen. Move back up here to item number 15, additional agenda items. I have none here this evening. Are there, is there anything else any commissioner would like to add at this time? Hearing none, we'll move on to public concerns and comments. I have no public comments and concerns cards this evening. Uh, unless somebody would like to address the board, we'll move on past that. Mrs. Almer, please come forward. We know who you are, but state your name and address for the record. I'm Julie Alma. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Swanee County School Board. Tonight was a little bit of a full circle moment for me because when Project Christmas, the mysterious catalyst project, was out there, um, I was Chairman of the School Board and I stood be before the County Commission and I asked for your support on the project because at the time our school district was in declining enrollment, which was directly tied to the poor economic condition of Swanee County. And I knew, and the district knew, that the immediate benefit of the tax revenue coming into the school district would be something we desperately needed. So the Klausner project actually has been wonderful for our school district. That half a million dollars came at a time where the state reduced our ability to levy a full two mills for facilities. We're down to a mill and a half. That money has helped fill the gaps of the recession. It's also directly tied to us bringing on a plumbing and electrical program at River Oak Technical College. The job demands from Klausner actually is what justified us bringing that program on. So I just wanted to say thank you because it really has been a blessing to this community. Our school district is working closely to try to fill those jobs and provide training opportunities for the company as needed. We are very serious about our role in economic development in our, this community, and we'll continue to do whatever we can. And I also wanted to th say thank you for supporting the FERDAP grant at the Douglas Park. When the school district deeded the Douglas property to the county, we knew how important Douglas High School's memory was to this community. And what you all are doing to maintain the gym and that park is so meaningful. So thank you. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yep. Your passion for, the, for our community is great. We appreciate your comments this evening. Anyone else? 
Seeing none, so go ahead. Item number 17, administrator's comments and information. Did you, yeah. Do you have anything further, Mr. County Administrator? You know, actually, I do. Oh, my well, give us an overview on what Public Works is doing. I, I usually yeah. re reserve my time for something in the future. This might be one of those future events. I won't right. think it's very long, though. We have a great deal going on out there. We've had a couple of pre-construction meetings on roads uh, in the last two weeks, I guess. Uh, the one today was on 180th and the bridge uh, the DOT is helping with. Um, the bridge contractor should be mobilized out there in about three weeks and have those initial repairs. Now these are temp actually temporary repairs. People will be able to use the bridge once the road is finished and that these repairs occur. But DOT will come back then and a, as soon as they can put sufficient funding together to tear that old bridge completely out and replace it with a new one. Um, so that's encouraging to know that that's occurring. Uh, we've all heard from people that live in that area that are tired of having to drive around and I can appreciate their frustration. In any event, um, I wanted to share too, when actually when Greg was up here, but other department heads do the same thing. When you look at your budget uh, book this year, and uh, I too was thrilled to know that we're going to postpone that a little bit. There have been so many changes in that book that I haven't even had time now since Friday to go back and look at the most recent changes. Um, but in there, what you're going to find with Parks and Recreation is a large number of grants, a lot of revenue in there, a lot, a lot of revenue associated with uh, the Road Department and with Parks and Recreation uh, that's funding that has been applied for uh, with state agencies for improvements in this county. Um, if you look at your ad valorem taxes over the last several years, you haven't generated more from year to year. Yet your budget is growing, but it's a reflection of grants that we have applied for to try to make improvements and improve services in this county that we simply cannot afford to pay for. That's just the reality. I don't know how many of you have received this report from Florida Tax Watch, but there's some interesting information in here uh, that I want to share with you very quickly. Uh, the first page is per capita total property tax levies. This is where we stand in comparison to other counties in the state. Number one being the highest per capita tax rate. Number 67 being the lowest in this case. We stand at number 54. We were among the lowest per capita taxes levied in the state of Florida. Very, very low. Per county, uh, excuse me, per capita county government property tax levies. We stand at number 51, again number one being the highest and number 67 being the lowest. So your county government property taxes are still amongst the lowest in the state of Florida. This is a really interesting one. In the last eight years, growth in total property taxes by county. Swanee County, like a few others, has actually declined minus 4.4 percent. Minus 4.4 percent property tax levies in the last eight years in Swanee County. There are many others here I could share with you, but anyway, I just want to point these facts out to you because your departments do a whole lot with very little, and really it's a lot of effort that goes into reaching out, trying to bring money in here from other sources that are available. Um, you know that your big source of revenue that makes the largest difference in this county probably is gas tax revenues that uh, not only we're generating as local option gas taxes, but those that uh, DOT or the state is generating statewide. We're in a tourism state. There's a huge benefit in all these tourists coming to this state. And then the uh, state itself taking on the responsibility of ensuring that uh, the various counties are able to share in those revenues that are generated. And that's about all I really wanted to share with you.
this evening. No, no public works update. Any, any, anything further? We're still running trucks and graders. I know uh, that filling conditions, potholes. Conditions runs. in many parts of the county are very dry. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mind sharing with you that we have had a few calls, which we often do when we are experiencing even short-term drought. People asking us to put a stop to our dust in front of their houses, um, which is very difficult to do. Um, but in any event, uh, if conditions improve some and we get a little bit more rain, it, it helps everyone, really. It helps the greater operators, the conditions, the roads, and the people that have to live on unpaved roads in the county. Great. All right. Uh, let's see. Board members, request comments and inquiries. Uh, I started last time with Commissioner Fleming. I'll start with you, Commissioner Wainer. So uh, since we're all coming up to the altar at the benediction and we're testifying and all that. But Sharing our sins. Yeah, I just, uh, just a real quick note. Uh, and it's uh, that time of year or this year out can, uh, campaigning and, and you, it kind of gets back to the, where the rubber meets the road and people ask you questions and you, it just kind of gets you back home a little bit. And, and uh, it's been great that I've been able to brag about our department heads, management staff, and employees. I, I'm, fellas, I'm, or folks, I, I can tell you that, uh, and some of y'all have, have been participating it out there and up here long before I came along even. But uh, I dare say that we have amassed the, the best, I think, the best management team yet. Uh, they do a tremendous job, and our employees respond very well to them. And uh, all we're doing is asking them to do stuff, and they're getting it done. And so my hat's off to all the department heads. Please pass that on to your employees. I know I do when I see them out on the road. I saw a group uh, trimming some uh, trees today, and I stopped and just said, hey, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, anyway, that's all, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Gamble? I don't have anything this time, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Sessions? I don't want to steal any Julie's thunder, but uh, I was going to mention they're having that school bash. If you want to elaborate on that, tell everybody where and when and um, this weekend. This is actually not a school district sponsored event. It is a community sponsored event, but the back to school bash is this Saturday uh, at Swanee High School, and it begins at... 9 a.m., I believe. 9 to 11, yeah. 9 to 11. It is free backpacks and school supplies for anyone that comes along with a lot of booths with uh, information. So everybody should come. It's going to be wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Commissioner Fleming? Uh, yes, sir. i like to... Uh, I didn't have any comments, I think, the last couple of times, but I, I appreciate you for, for, for rescheduling this. This workshop because it has been kind of burdensome to me. Uh, been pretty busy. Uh, I was sitting out looking at some of the members of the Douglas alumni, and I know they're wondering what in the world is going on with the work. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I'm glad that this has been postponed. I, I really wasn't prepared, and um, I think it's a good idea. Uh, uh, maybe we can get some things lined up. You know, we, the progress has begun. We're in the process of, of getting that work done. And, and it's, it's, it's like giving me a Mac at the church. You don't want to give me a Mac. I talk a lot. I have a tendency to just say a few words. <laughs> you gave me this opportunity, so I'm going to speak. Okay. I, I also want to thank Mr. Scott, for uh, Greg Scott, for he was talking about his guys in the shade. And I know that this inclement weather is hot, and they need to take breaks every now and then. I'd be out on the roads, and I, and I do see these guys from time to time relaxing. But I'm, 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 I'm having common sense to know that they have gotten hot. And when he said that, I, I appreciate you, how you're supporting your workers, the people that work for you. And also, a couple of weeks ago, I noticed this big oak tree had fell at, at a church. And I went out and looked at this big tree. And how these county workers, these workers, how they get out there and they work. And just recently, on last week, I was, uh, I got off from work, and there was this big pine. 
and fell. And they took this big pine down across the road. A lot of times we don't know what these guys are out there doing. But if you get out there and you ride and ride with your supervisors, you see how they work. They work diligently. I know we're, we're approaching our budget workshop, and I did express to them, we need to sit down. I know they get that 1% per year, I think, if I'm correct. But we need to figure out a way to, to show those guys that attaboy, something, some kind of appreciation for what they're doing for this county. You know, we see grass, it get, it get mold. Uh, we see tree limbs, we see trees that fall across the road. So some, kind, some type of appreciation during our budget workshop, maybe we can come together and, and give them some type of uh, appreciation, pay increases. That's Thank all you. I have. Thank you, Commissioner Fleming. I, too, am happy about the uh, having to postpone them because of the preparation, but I'm not happy about the fact that we, the time frame that we got the books. I think that, that needs to be a discussion that we have during budget workshops. But just to give the public an idea of what we're talking about here, last year we had around a $68 million budget, 67 and some change. This year we're looking at an $89 million budget. So that's a significant number to get your mind wrapped around with all the intricate details. A significant portion of that are the grants that are going to be received from DOT and, and other sources um, that are specifically allocated for various projects around the county and that is a direct attribution to administrative staff for working hard to get those dollars funneled to our local community so they deserve uh, some props for that and bringing those dollars home to Suwannee County. So having said that, that's all I have this evening. I don't think we have any informational items uh, this evening that we have to consider. So I just need one thing, gentlemen. Motion adjourned. Motion to adjourn by Commissioner Fleming, seconded by Commissioner Sessions. All in favor say aye. 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 See you next time, folks. <laughs>